the Upanishads, translated by Max Miller, in two parts. Katha Upanishad, first Adhyaya, third Valley. There are the two drinking the reward in the world of their own works, entered into the cave of the heart, dwelling on the highest summit, here in the heart. Those who know Brahman call them shade and light. Likewise, those householders who perform the Pranna Taketa sacrifice, may we be able to master that Taketa rite, which is a bridge for sacrificers, also that which is the highest imperishable Brahman. For those who wish to cross over the fearless shore, know the self to be sitting in the chariot, the body to be the chariot, the intellect the death, the chariot, the mind, the reins, the senses they call the horses, the objects of the senses, the roads. When he, the highest self, is in union with the body, the senses, and the mind, then wise people call him the enjoyer. He who has no understanding in whose mind the reins is never firmly held. His senses, horses, are unmanageable, like the vicious horses of a charioteer. But he who is understanding and whose mind is always firmly held, his senses are under control, like good horses of a charioteer. He who has no understanding, who is unmindful and always impure, never reaches that place, but enters into the round of hearts. But he who has understanding, who is mindful and always pure, reaches indeed that place from whence he is not born again. But he who has understanding for his charioteer, and who holds the reins of the mind, he reaches the end of his journey, and that is the highest place of Vishnu. Beyond the senses there are objects, beyond the objects there is the mind, beyond the mind there is the intellect, the great self is beyond the intellect, beyond the great there is the undeveloped, beyond the undeveloped there is the person, Arusha. beyond the person there is nothing, there is the goal, the highest road, that self is hidden in all beings and does not shine forth, but it is seen by subtle seers throughout their sharp and subtle intellect. A wise man should keep down speech and mind. He should keep them within the self, which is knowledge. He should keep knowledge within the self, which is the great, and he should keep that right within the self, which is the quiet. Rise, wake, having a team you doings. Understand then, the sharp edge of a razor is difficult to pass over. Thus, the wise say the path is hard for the self. He who has perceived that which is without sound, without touch, without form, without decay, without taste, without smell, eternal, without beginning, without end, beyond the great and unchangeable, is freed from the jaws of death. A wise man who has repeated or heard the ancient story of Epictetus, told by death, is magnified in the world of Brahman. And he who repeats this great mystery in an assembly of Brahmins are full of devotion at the time of the Sraddha sacrifice, obtains thereby infinite rewards. So, more important than the outer requirement, which is, could even be considered essential, right, is this consciousness of that great mystery and what exactly it is. The boons, the greatest boon, of course, being the excellent teaching. You know, 14 is the verse. There's 17 verses in this. Um, Sankara interprets. Uh, okay, verse 13, speech and mind. He should keep down speech in the mind. 
like the Zoroastrian formula is one, it's not fully Zoroastrian, but you know what I mean, that's what they typically call it. Um, good thoughts, good words, good deeds, you know, they all um, connect to each other, right? The two, mentioned in verse one, are explained as the higher and lower Brahman, the former being the light, the latter the shadow. Vritta is explained as reward and connected with Sukritta, literally good deeds, but frequently used in the sense of Sivakritta, one's own good and evil deeds. The difficulty is how the highest Brahman can be said to drink the reward, Vrittapa, the former deeds, as it is above all works and above all rewards, the commentator explains it away as a metaphorical expression, as we often speak of many when we mean one. The Mundaka Upanishad 311. Max Miller has joined Sukritasya with Loka, Loka, meaning the world, i.e., the state, the environment which we made our, to ourselves by our former deeds. These two verses may be latter additions. Um, what, verse 2 and 3? Um, the notes to verse 2. So. Um, the mind, the brains, the simile of the chariot has some points of similarity with the well-known passage in Plato's Phaedros, but Plato did not borrow the simile from the Brahmins as little as Xenophon need have consulted our Upanishad 2.2 in writing his prologue of Perdikos. Because obviously we're talking about a lot of universal things.